the NFL in a meltdown after taking the bait from President Trump. We're going to watch the bait be cast, and then we're going to see what's happening with the fans. And friends, I'll explain this to you in terms that you can understand at the dollar menu at McDonald's. I'm Randall Terry. This is Voice of Resistance. Oh, you're going to love this episode. Well, friends, as you know, politics have hit the NFL in a, what can only be described as a head-on collision. And I can promise you the NFL is going to turn out to be the big loser, all right? President Trump is going to actually end up being the big winner. Democrat Party probably going to be the big loser. But uh, before I go any further, please forgive me for jumping right in with conclusions. I'm going to cover this today from two sides. One is the rules. And then the second is the politics of it, the ethics of it, all right? So stay with me. I promise you, you're going to get stuff on today's program that you won't get any place else with the talking heads, whether they're on CNN or Fox or MSNBC. All right. This talking head just thinks a little bit more outside the box and tries to get to the bottom line of things. First of all, here are the rules. All right. The Washington Post published a portion of the rules of the NFL. This comes from page A62 through 63. The national anthem must be played prior to every NFL game, and all players must be on the sideline for the national anthem. During the national anthem, players on the field and bench should stand at attention, face the flag, hold helmets in their left hand, and refrain from talking. The home team should ensure that the American flag is in good condition. It should be pointed out to the players and coaches that we continue to be judged by the public in this area of respect for the flag and our country. Failure to be on the field by the start of the national anthem may result in discipline such as fines, suspensions, and or the forfeiture of draft choices for violations of the above, including first offenses. That's the rules of the NFL. So now we know why, up until very recently, at the beginning of every single game, there was this symmetry. They're all standing there, they're standing in a line, they're holding their helmet in their hand. Oh, look, it's choreography. It's a dance. It's part of the ritual. It's part of the NFL, dare I say it, liturgy. That's the rule book. It's the canons of the NFL. Now, President Trump made this statement uh, I believe it was on Friday at a speech in Alabama. Listen to this. Wouldn't you love to see one of these NFL owners when somebody disrespects our flag to say, get that son of a <laughs> off the field right now, out, he's fired. He's fired! You know, some owner's going to do that. He's going to say, that guy that disrespects our flag, he's fired. And that owner, they don't know it. They don't know it. They're friends of mine, many of them. They don't know it. They'll be the most popular person for a week. They'll be the most popular person in this country, because that's a total disrespect of our heritage. That's a total disrespect of everything that we stand for, OK? everything that we stand for. And I know we have freedoms, and we have freedom of choice, and many, many different freedoms. But you know what? It's still totally disrespectful. And you know, when the NFL ratings are down massively, massively, the NFL ratings are down massively. All right. You might notice, you might have noticed that the NFL ratings are way down. There's a lot of fans not going to games and we're going to show you in this show people burning their gear all right we're going to focus on the Steelers because their offense was so egregious now let me play for you the clip of the soundbite of the Steelers coach the Steelers as a team stayed off the field in violation of the rules 
They stayed off the field during the singing of the national anthem, except for one man who is a vet, and there you see his picture, who stood there proudly and obeying the rules. All right, he actually wasn't on the sideline, but he was there. So God bless him for that. Took guts for him to do that. All right, I'm gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll look at the rules and we'll look at the politics. First, play the clip, play the clip. You know, these are very divisive times for our country. And, um, you know, for us uh, as a football team, it's about us remaining solid. Uh, we're not gonna be divided by, by anything said by anyone. And uh, that's the thing that I posted to our guys. I said, if you feel the need to do anything, um, I'm gonna be supportive of that. Uh, as Americans, you have that right. But whatever we do, we're gonna do 100%, we're gonna do it together. And we're not gonna play politics with football players, with football coaches. Uh, we're not participating in the anthem today. Not to be disrespectful to the anthem, to remove ourselves from this circumstance. Today, many so-called Christian intellectuals believe that the God of evolution used billions of years of death and destruction to evolve the bodies of the first human beings. Then, they simply declare the theory of evolution as fact to justify their unproven scientific fallacies. By the grace of God, more and more Catholics are rejecting this modern day mythology in favor of the traditional doctrine of creation as recorded by the Bible and believed and taught by all the fathers and doctors of the church. To find out how sound theology and natural science confirm the sacred history of Genesis, visit the Colby Center for the Study of Creation and be sure to check out our bookstore which has titles like I have spoken to you from heaven, a Catholic defense of creation in six days, and a Catholic assessment of evolutionary theory. That's the Colby Center for the Study of Creation. You're going to want to stay with me through this whole show because we're going to show you a clip in the next segment of a diehard Steelers fan setting fire to well over a thousand dollars worth of swag a, a, a devout christian man but i i want to first focus on the rules that's going to be a part of the ethical discussion so you go to mcdonald's all right and you're in line let's say it's rush hour at mcdonald's or any fast food chain and you're standing there and somebody behind the the, the counter at mcdonald's you're there for the dollar menu and someone behind the counter says black people are mistreated by the police End the racism now. Or white people are bad. Donald Trump is a jerk. Or it's Martin Luther King Day and you say, you hear somebody behind the counter say, Martin Luther King was a serial adulterer. Martin Luther King had communist friends. Whatever it is, so whatever political message, right? How do you react as a customer, as a customer, you're there to buy a hamburger, okay? Do you wanna to listen to this person? Even if you agree with them. Let's say you agree with everything that was just said, which no one would, but you know, whatever it is that's coming from behind the, the counter. Is that why you're there? No, you're there because you want a hamburger. So when, when, if I own that McDonald's, all right, I own that actual restaurant, and that employee does it, he is fired that fast. He's fired because you represent this store, you represent me, and you're here to sell a hamburger, all right? Now, I want you to start playing those clips of what's happening now with these people. So here's the reaction. You see this man burning his season tickets in New York City. You see this woman who's a diehard Steelers fan. She's about to auction off all her stuff. She's gonna burn some of it and she's gonna auction other. And then there's this older vet, God bless him. He, uh, he set fire to, to his jersey while he played the national anthem. These are the customers. These are the customers of the NFL. They tuned in, they bought their swag, they go to the game to see what? A game. And one of the reasons that McDonald's is so successful is because you know wherever you go in this country, when you order McDonald's fries, they taste the same. As long as they've just freshly come out of the grease. You order a quarter pounder with cheese, it tastes the same. You order a Big Mac with its special sauce, 
it tastes the same. There's continuity, there's symmetry, there's consistency. I go to get a burger at McDonald's, that's what I got. If they started changing the menu, things didn't taste right. People didn't dress right. People could wear whatever they wanted. People didn't show up at work. They showed up late for work. Would you, do you think that the McDonald's would even survive? So in a strictly rules-based, business-based view of what's going on, strictly the rules of the NFL, just think of them as a McDonald's chain. They're breaking their own rules and they're shooting themselves in the foot and they are ensuring. What, what we're going to see is we're going to, we'll look back on this weekend and they're going to begin to calculate the loss, the financial loss to various teams in the hundreds of millions and aggregately it might end up you know, millions in the individual teams, and it might end up being hundreds of millions or billions for the league. Right now, the, the, the most expensive franchise, I think, is the Kraft, the Boston uh, Patriots. I think that the, that team is valued at $4.8 billion, and I think that one of the Los Angeles teams is valued at $1.8 billion. Don't, don't quote me for sure on those numbers, but I follow this stuff loosely. So what we're going to see is more people saying, I won't go. You're going to start to see stadiums with seats unsold, people who have season tickets refusing to go, all right? Because the NFL is breaking its own rules. First, let's just start with the rules, the rule states. If you just tuned in, find me online, and you can see the rule that the NFL has. All players shall be on the field for the, sta for the national anthem, standing there with their helmets in their left hand, being quiet, no talking. Show respect for the flag and the country. That's what it says. So President Trump says if they don't respect the flag in our country, they should be fired. Well, it's funny. That's what the NFL rules say. I don't think he even knew that. If he did, I would have been quoting, here's what the rules say, people. Why aren't they enforcing the rules? That would have gotten him off on a much better start. But I digress. So you, 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 if you go online, and a lot of our viewers don't, do the web search and I applaud you for that you're just addicted to, to TV shows which is a much lower level crisis than, than the cyberspace but if you were to go there you will see literally popping up hundreds it's going to go into the thousands of videos of people destroying their stuff and saying I'm done because the NFL, they're morons. You, if, you, if the NFL commissioner does by any chance get to watch this, you're an idiot. You're a moron. The best thing that you could do for the sake of the league is to fine Pittsburgh immediately. Make an example of them. Maybe suspend them for a game. The whole team. The whole team. And say, you cannot play next Sunday. Or on such and such a date. You forfeit the game, the other team gets a win. Because of the grotesque violation of the rules. All right, enforce your rules, NFL, because if you don't, guess what? The customer is going to, you're going to have hell to pay. You will have hell to pay from the customer, the end user who you're watching burn swag. I've got to take a break. We'll talk about the ethics when we come back. You're not going to want to miss the video clip I'm going to show you. Have Muslim terrorists hijacked? the peaceful religion of Islam? Or is there more to the story? The answer lies in the life of one man, Mohammed, the founder of Islam. Muslim terrorists see themselves inside a 1,400-year-old story, a narrative that focuses on specific events in the life of Mohammed. We are going to look at Mohammed's life using their most sacred literature, we will look at Muhammad at the Battle of Badr. We'll see him deal with those who mock him. We'll see the times when he used deception. We'll witness Muhammad's anti-Semitism. And yes, we will discuss Muhammad and his teachings concerning sex, slavery, and jihad. Friend, if you want to understand Islamic terrorism, get this series today. In most traditions, family traditions, religious traditions, liturgies, ceremony, there are symbols, there are emblems, and you respect them. You participate in the respect of them, even if you have questions in your heart. All right? Th those are the rules. 
That's the way the human race functions on a great number of levels, all right? I could go on and on about the ethics of this, why it is so bad, why it is so disrespectful, but this man and his wife who's holding the camera, they do it better. So I want you to watch this Steelers fan who lives in Texas. Watch what he's about to do. Listen to what he says. Hey, my name is Robert L. Williams. I am a master electrician in North Texas. I've had a company for well over 35 years. Uh, I love this country. I love what it stands for. I love the flag. I love why we are Americans. Today, my team, the Pittsburgh Steelers, decided that they needed to keep themselves in the locker room while Mr. Villanova went out to salute the flag and to stand for the anthem. All right, this is what I think of that. All my Steelers stuff, this is a $450 leather jacket. Watch me burn it. All my hats, all my sweaters, you know something? We have morals in this country. We stand for this country. My great uncle's bones are lying in the bottom of Pearl Harbor, all right? For this country, for the flag, for your freedom to play in the NFL and to say whatever you want to say. But you do not dis... You do not disrespect the flag and the country and the Constitution and why we are here and why we have our freedoms. So watch this stuff burn. Yeah, Super Bowl, right? As if I care. What I care about is this country. What I care about is our freedom. What I care about is everyone's right to be free. And it's all about those stars and stripes. Come on, baby, light. There we go. And my father was a Marine. My grandfather was in the Army. My uncle was in the Army. Our right. son is in the Army currently. And, yeah. you're, and you're not going to sing the national anthem and stand united as a country and disrespect our, our veterans. No, you're not. You're not going to disrespect our country. You're not going to disrespect our flag. You're not going to disrespect each and every veteran who died, who died so that we could stay free and say what we want and believe what we believe. You don't. You've crossed the line. This is a line you guys are unaware of, but you have crossed it. I'm done. Are you done? I love America, and I love you. God bless you, and I pray that you believe that Jesus Christ died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day for your salvation. That's what this country was, was founded on. That and the Torah, the Ten Commandments. Believe it. Embrace it. Ooh. Obviously, he's Christian. You can see that from the end there. And he's mad. He's really mad. He burned a lot of stuff. And there's people following his example all over. And, you know, he might become a Dallas Cowboys fan. Interestingly, Jerry Brown, the owner of the Cowboys, said, you're not doing it on this team. You're on this team. You're not doing it. So... Good for him. And you're going to see a lot of people become Dallas Cowboys fans. You are, and maybe some others, but there's an old expression, Dallas is America's home team. I'm not saying that I'm a Dallas Cowboys fan. I'm not. I grew up in New York, okay? so, But the fact that they are saying, you're not doing it here. These are the rules. You work for me. You don't have a McDonald's owner say, oh, he's such a cute young man or she's such a cute young girl and you know everyone gets to express themselves so when they've got the mcdonald's uniform on and they're standing behind the counter working for me i just have to let them express themselves and say what they want no they work for you and you're getting paid by the end user and when you say and do things that are offensive to millions of people 
who have family members who are who themselves served in the military or family members who died in the military. You don't let them do this. You say you're fired. President Trump was right on the ethical side of it, friends. I'll be right back. I've got one more comment that I want to make. I know that you're going to want to hear it. What would Mohammed do? Islamic Terrorism Explained is the best movie series documentary ever produced on the life of Muhammad and Islam. How do I know? Because it's what critics are saying. John Moore, radio host and author said, I learned more from what would Muhammad do about Islam and Islamic terrorism than I've learned from everything I ever read and watched in my entire life. Best-selling author, Dr. Bill Warner said, what Would Mohammed Do is the best movie series, TV production on the life of Mohammed and Islamic terrorism that has ever been produced. Friends, this is what the experts are saying. No one has ever done what we've done. I encourage you to get one, two, four copies. Call 304-289-3700. That's 304-289-3700. Or order it at the address or the website that you see on the screen. Friend, we have a series that will help you and those you love to have an impact on this country. It's called Insurrecta Nex. That's Latin for revolution against the killing of innocent people. This is the history, the philosophy, and the theology of social revolution in America. We look at the Stamp Act, the Boston Tea Party, the abolition of slavery, the abolition of child labor, women's voting rights, the civil rights movement. All of them have this in common, courage sacrifice, dedication, and in-your-face tactics and rhetoric. That's one of the reasons that we've been losing the culture wars the last 40 years is because the bad guys are using these tactics and we aren't. We will send you this 14-part TV series along with these manuals for students, a teacher's facilitator guide for only $40. Go to 304-289-3700, 304-289-3700. The man's name, of course, Alejandro Villanueva. He is Hispanic American, and his jerseys right now are the best-selling jerseys in the NFL. <laughs> I During the break, I went in and told my wife, order one of his jerseys. I'll be wearing it on the show soon, I promise you just to show respect to him. And his coach, the one we saw the clip from earlier, chided him because he didn't stay in the locker room with the rest of the guys. We wanted 100% for the team. He said, no, I'm a vet. I'm going to respect the flag. And oh, by the way, coach, I'm going to obey the rules of the NFL. The coach wanted him to go into the disobedience to the rules. You know, we're going to do this unified. So here's the big thing. There is systemic injustice against African-Americans. There is, okay? From the, the way, from the beginning of this government, the U.S. Constitution codified the evil of slavery. And then the Jim Crow laws. Now, we're past most of that. There are still great uh, disparities in the sentencing of young black men for nonviolent drug crimes. That is a, that's just a fact, people, it is. But the greatest, greatest place of systemic injustice is child killing. One in three black babies is murdered by abortion. One in three. It's a search and destroy mission for young black babies. And Margaret Sanger, the founder of Planned Parenthood, wanted it that way. So while I don't agree with these men doing this, if they had guts and they had brains, see, that's the two things. Some of them had guts, but they don't have brains. They're not smart. They're, they don't have wisdom. If they wanted to make their point, <clears throat> do it when it's not game time, and then say in the greatest injustice the African-American community is, is facing is the self-conscious slaughter of its own babies. And there's one other thing. <clears throat> if anyone says something against an African-American person or group of persons, by definition, they're a racist. It's just not true. It's not true. And to be lectured, I'm obviously not African-American, but to be lectured by young African-American men who are making obscene amounts of money for a game about the injustices in America. Hey, man, wake up. You're making a ton of money for a game. We just had an African-American president. 
yes, there are still lingering problems, but not like you guys are making it out to be. And if somebody points out inconsistencies or any wrongs that are happening committed by African-Americans, we're not racist, okay? We're not.